My name's Gareth Butler, and welcome to King's Home and Vision. On King's Home and Vision this week, an honest Brian Redpath on the most difficult week in his King's Home career. The best and worst of Andy Hazel and Mike Tyndall on trying to topple Saracens this weekend. First up is Brian Redpath, who gives us the lowdown on a difficult week for Gloucester. Yeah, hi, um, I think in the four years I've been here, that's the first time that I've been as disappointed um, after a match, than, than I would say, than any other defeat, even the Cardiff one. Uh, I think that was, was probably the worst. I think I was, you know, the debrief on Tuesday was very honest, it was very personal to every single one in there, and, and I think it had to be, because it was, was totally unacceptable. The work ethic, the work rate that we showed within the game. And Northampton came with a simple game plan and they didn't have to beat us. We, we, we beat ourselves. We didn't even have to, they didn't have to do a huge amount to beat us last weekend. And, and we looked flat. We looked everything that you don't want to be judged on. And, uh, you know, I thought it was the right time to, on Tuesday, to be honest and upfront with everyone and say what we, we felt and then back it up totally with, you know, highlighting individuals, highlighting the group, highlighting the team work ethic in front of everyone and making sure that no one can hide that, give them an avenue to talk through it and if they had a good excuse then fine but as it was there wasn't a huge amount of talking coming back towards me when I was showing some of these clips because the clips showed everything that, that, I, that I hate that comes out in a game of rugby. Are you satisfied with some of the answers you got? I mean what, what answers did you get and what sort of reaction did you get to that, that sort of meeting? Um, you don't get too many answers when it's as black as white as it was. And I certainly don't want any answers that are just ticking boxes. And I've said it all along, talk is cheap and action, action is always louder than words. Now, we went out and trained in the afternoon and we, we bashed each other around a little bit. Whether that's right or wrong, I'm not I'm not really too fast. We broke a few in there as well. And now that's always hard when we've got such a small squad. But I was there to find out actually if some of them do mean what they say. And... and you know, yeah, we've got a reaction to it and we've got to prove it. This weekend we've got to get a reaction towards it again. <coughs> and that doesn't come down to winning or losing. That just comes down to showing that you want to play. And I've said it all season, I want people to play and put their bodies in the line for Gloucester. That didn't happen last weekend. You broke a few. I mean, uh, I, I, I've heard about Baltimore. I mean, what's, what's up with him? He dislocated his shoulder uh, in a tackle with Somerville, yeah. who had damaged a little bit of his knee briefly as well, which is a, a lot smaller scale. Mark will obviously went and see, he'll see a specialist about shoulder injury. Yeah. It was out of joint, so. Um, but, you know, I'm not. We have a very small squad, we've said it all along, it's going to be a tough year, and we want everyone to stay fit. But I won't accept performances like that by letting people turn up and, and not giving their, their all. Um, I don't think it was based on. Um, they didn't want it, they just didn't have the energy there for some reason. And we didn't, we've not been hard through the week, it's not been tough. We backed off compared to what we had in pre-season and, and we just let ourselves down as a group performance wise now I need a reaction and they all need to understand that hopefully the video and everything shown that on Tuesday that we get a reaction from it and we turn up and, and play you know, as I said before it's not about skill it's not about tactics it's just about working hard you can't fault anyone if they work where does that sort of type of performance come from then when you you know all the best laid plans in the week and that sort of thing how do you avoid that happening again on, on, on the weekend you know it, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where it came from. I don't know. You know, I thought we had broken the back of a lot of that in the first four games of the season. Even four and a half games of the season, like half of the game against London Irish. And then for a performance to turn up like that, I don't know. Um, I question myself. I've questioned all of us as a coaching group sat down and said, is it us? Or, <coughs> you know, is that the reasons? And, and it can't be when it's, when it's if, if we put you or I on that pitch and you say that you've got one sole role is to work hard then I'm sure you're going to work hard. If that's all you're getting judged on, then you'll do it. Now, what's all I've asked them to do is work hard, and I've asked the decision makers to make the right decisions. They're not always going to go our way. But what we can't do is fall off the back of work rate. It's just, it just can't happen. So I don't know. If it keeps stacking up, then obviously there has to be more more thought of it, more made of it. Mm. But certainly at the moment, I'm not, I'm not going to overreact. I've reacted enough to think that you know I'm going to be very. I've been brutally honest to, with them, and let's say I backed it up with the video stuff, which is key, because no one can hide from that. There's nothing in there to say that they have had a different opinion to what I have had or what's shown. They firmly know where they stand now, and now that that 
that's not me trying to be the big man or anything within yeah. that group. People may think I am easy going and happy and stuff, but I've got an angry edge inside of me that, that it's always been there as a player as a, and as a coach. I, I will not accept standards that were set at the weekend. Next up, in the best and worst of Andy Hazel, we hear how he once broke his toe by tripping over a rubber mat. Um, my England cap, first England cap. Um, probably breaking my toe running out onto the pitch, very embarrassing and horrific injury. Who was that again? Uh, I was against Sale, um, running onto the pitch and caught with my toe on like, this rubber mat and thing and tore the ligaments and was on crutches for three months. Some, Johnny Wilkinson, someone like that, just for his, just for everything, you know. He's when I played with him a few years ago, when he sort of was on the top of his game yeah, yeah. and his tackling, everything he was just his all-round professionalism was, was outstanding, really. Um, toughest opponent, I say, a guy called Del David Wilson used to play for Harlequins. When I first came up, Australian flanker. Yeah. Um, he was, uh, he, he taught me a few lessons early on there. Um, Richie McCall. Um, I think, I mean, George Smith, I'd say, would push him really close. Um, but for me, it's just Richie McCall. I feel he just does everything, really. Um, he does a lot of the unseen work, which is, you know, which, he, which I think he needs to do as a, as a good number seven. But he's also, he's disruptive. And, you know, he's, when he doesn't play, I don't think the All Blacks play so well or Canterbury. I don't support any football team. <laughs> And finally, Mike Tyndall on a massive two games against Saracens and Leeds coming up. So it must be a tough atmosphere in, in the camp this week. I mean, what's the sort of what's the sort of fallout from the weekend? Um, no disappointment, frustration. Um, you know, uh, it was just we gave a, really gave a game away on the weekend, and you know, there's only uh, only look at each other on that, and, and there was a lot of disappointment. But we've worked hard this week, and the only, you know, we get the the good thing about it, doing what we do is we get the opportunity to put it right, you know, away at the leaders. So, and um, that's what we've got to go and do. Ross has just been pretty tough talking about, you know, singling out players and things like that in a in a, in a, in a meeting on Tuesday. How did the players react to that? I mean, you're no, it's not it's not singling it out for criticism from criticism's point of view. It's it's you know which are, it's working systems and if people make mistakes in the systems you know you've got to learn from mistakes the only way you get better um, you know and it was you know, we, we turned up with a certain intensity the first week of the season and, and it wasn't there on the weekend and you know everyone's got to own up to that it was, it was across the board it wasn't just individuals from inside within that we had individual mistakes in, in team systems but you know what we've got to look for is to go up there and and it really express what we're, you know as a group of players we're, we're about, and and that's what you got to do week in week out. That's your basic and your core, and then you get the extras off the back of that, and and, and we've got to restamp that level. You assess your own form. You... Of course you do every yeah. week. You know, for me on the weekend wasn't good enough either. You know, it's not just across the board. You know, defensively it wasn't good enough for me, and and, and I've had, you know, but. You know, that's what you've got to do. You've got to have the ability to face up to that and make sure it doesn't happen. As a, as a sort of professional rugby player, games like this, when you've lost two on the trot, you've got the three out of three Saracens coming out. Yeah, and this is a massive game, yeah. no doubt. You know, there's no hiding behind it, and everyone needs to stand there and own up to it. I know people always say it's only four games in, but that's beside the point. You know, last week was a massive game. It's so much easier when you sat in a position where you've won two and only lost one. Now we're in a situation where you know we're in negative numbers and we need to get back. And you know, but I think it's a great game to have to go away somewhere we've had a lot of success over the last couple of years, and and a team that are at the top of the table, and it's somewhere you can really go out there and there's a real hopefully bite about us. For all the latest on Gloucester Rugby, visit www.thisisgloucestershire.co.uk forward slash Gloucester Rugby. My name's Gareth Butler, and that was King's Home in Vision. <laughs>